Good evening, and thank you for coming out tonight. As I was so nicely introduced, my name is Julia Fleming, and I'm a senior here at the William Penn Charter School. The topic of my talk tonight is service. Typically, service is known as giving to others, but hopefully by the end of the tonight, I can show you that it is much more than that. Like many things in my life, I stumbled into my current service work. Two years ago, I was ass assigned a school paper whose topic was gender roles in China. I must confess, the subject did not inspire me. So, like most teenagers, I decided to procrastinate by going on Facebook. <laughs> by chance, I saw a photo of Selena Gomez and a small girl in a hospital bed. I was taken back by the unusual appearance of the child and decided to learn more. Her name was Hannah Wong, and her make-a-wish was to meet her favorite performer, Selena Gomez. I next learned that Hannah suffered from an incredibly sad and difficult condition known as progeria. In its simplest terms, progeria is a very rare, rapid aging disease that causes children's bodies to age eight to 10 times faster than the normal rate. As a consequence, these children have shortened lifespans, typically 13 years of age. Their lives are complicated with cardiovascular and other issues related with old age. After several hours of internet research, I realized I had found an alternate paper topic that fortunately my teacher later agreed with. So, if you are hoping for a talk on gender roles in China tonight, I'm afraid you will be disappointed. I knew my paper would be stronger if I had the opportunity to speak with a child who has progeria. Through the Progeria Research Foundation's website, I located a family in New Jersey who agreed to meet with me. Meet Zoe. At the time, this beautiful little girl was three years old. She is full of life, smart as a whip, and a proud tour guide of the family home. My first profound realization was that children with progeria are just like any other kids in their hearts and in their minds. They are just trapped in a body whose genetic mutation causes them to age out of their control. Progeria is extremely rare and only affects 250 or so kids worldwide. It is found on all continents and across all ethnic groups and races. And while research and clinical testing is ongoing, a cure has still not been found. After meeting Zoe, I realized that my involvement with progeria had gone beyond research to a desire to do service for this community. When I started out two years ago, my thinking was, what could I give to these families? Now, only two years later, all I can think of is what these families have given to me. And I now know that this transformation of giving and receiving is part of a continuum of service and good works that can be expanded by more people getting involved. Let me tell you my story. I wanted to help, but how? I had but a limited professional resume, including bake sales and babysitting clients. I wasn't sure how I could meaningfully help the cause. Further, Nothing was close by. Research was being done in Boston, and children with progeria are spread out all around the world. Even Zoe was too far for me to make regular contact with. But as fate would have it, I spoke with a neighborhood friend the following week who informed me of the Falcone family. Here in my own backyard, Phyllis and Mark Falcone have two boys with progeria. Nathan, age eight, and Bennett, age five, and their older sister, Libby, who does not have the disease. These boys are only two of six in the world to have this rare variant of the disease called mandibuloacral dysplasia type B. There is even less known about this strand of progeria and no research to date. I immediately jumped into action and began pestering Phyllis Falcone with phone calls until she was forced to call me back. 
After meeting the Falcone family, I decided that my service work can involve fundraising to help find a cure for progeria. Over the next two years, I frantically began raising money. It started first through the generous contributions of my classmates, with their attendance at not one, but three dance parties. My classmates alone are responsible for raising over $6,000. Next, I sponsored a walkathon, raising over $4,000 where almost 200 people joined the family to stroll Penn Charter's campus and its surrounding neighborhoods. Not to mention, I had ovens all around the area working overtime to create enough goods to support my many bake sales. And finally, I started my own line of hair ties, which I made at home and sold through my local community. Throughout all of these efforts, I have helped to raise over $12,000 to date. This money has gone to the Progeria Research Foundation, which recently found its first ever treatment for progeria. While I am enormously proud of making this contribution, the most important part of my service activities involve my personal relationships with the Falcone family and other families within the progeria community. The most personally meaningful events over the past two years have come with the private and quiet moments I've spent with each member of the Falcone family. From babysitting, to birthday parties, and even to some holidays like Halloween. The time spent together has created a permanent bond between the Falcone children and me. I have become less concerned about my own needs and interests and more focused on the boys and their future. This meant less time for parties and shopping trips, and more time for babysitting and fundraising events. It was a trade-off I only became aware of after the fact, and at one point, Phyllis Falcone even wondered to me if I was going out with my friends enough. Through all of the time I've spent with Mark, Phyllis, and the kids, I've learned invaluable lessons about accountability and responsibility. When watching the boys' parents are babysitting, I have become acutely aware of the circumstances in which the boys need to be protected against. A simple fall could result in a broken bone or a hematoma, and Nathan and Bennett have had their fair share of injuries. And I've learned to become vigilant whenever I'm around them. Teenagers often feel they are invincible and will live forever, and that was true for me as well. So the most important lesson the Falcone family have taught me is the preciousness of a human life. We all have an internal clock which eventually will run out. But with progeria, we know this clock is going to stop early unless a cure is found. The unfairness of this proposition has taught me to treat every day with as much joy and positivity as possible. My experiences with the Falcone family have changed my priorities, and in many ways, it has helped me to grow up. Who knew that a chance sighting of Selena Gomez doing good works could change the next two years of my life? That is the nature of what I call the continuum of service. I unknowingly have affected other people who have chosen to become involved in service or building awareness of progeria themselves. Simple acts like my older sister and older cousin doing college research papers on the science of progeria, to my younger neighbors, shown above, donating their loom bracelet sales to the finding of a cure. Distant, distant donations have involved um, important roles in funding research and distributing medications. But by committing yourself, your time, your dedication, and your emotional involvement into a cause. You allow yourself to learn and grow in unexpected ways. And the glow of this transformative process can be contagious to the people in your life. But the overarching principle is not what you get involved with, but that you're getting involved. I would like to end today with a quote that I think embodies all of the principles I have spoken about here. In the words of Mahatma Gandhi, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. Thank you.